French wine is arguably one of the best things about France. And some say it's the best in the world, which is debatable, of course. But one thing's for sure, wine is an art form in France. It's an integral part of our culture and a thriving industry. But just why does French wine have such a great reputation? What's the trick to getting a really good bottle? And what are the latest trends? Join us for this episode of French Connections Plus, where we savor the wonderful world of French wine. France is famous for the quality and diversity of its wine. It goes with all the good things in life. Good food, good company, and good times. Now, French people learn to appreciate wine from a young age, but by law, you have to wait until you're 18 years old to purchase or consume alcohol in public. But most French people get their first taste of wine way before that. It's kind of a rite of passage. But it's not at all hidden or taboo. In fact, it tends to happen in a family setting. As a child, you dip your finger in the wine to taste it, and then as you get older, you get to take a little sip, and the day when you get served a glass of wine at the table means that you've become an adult. And you're part of an ongoing tradition here in France that's centuries old. French winemaking roots run deep. The first traces date back to the 6th century BC when Greek settlers colonized southern Gaul. Under the Roman Empire, locals perfected techniques, turning winemaking into an art form and gaining a global reputation. Yeah. These days, wine is produced across the country. In fact, it's hard to talk about French wines in general, as wines tend to have more of a regional than a national identity. You talk about Bordeaux, Burgundy, Beaujolais, Champagne, the Loire Valley. There are over a dozen winemaking regions. And each region has a unique terroir. Terroir refers to a combination of factors like a region's specific climate, topography, and soil. On top of that, there are local winemaking techniques and traditions handed down over generations. In short, there's a mosaic of features that gives each wine a unique character and flavor. Today, French wines are considered a benchmark for quality that other winemaking countries seek to emulate. Part of the reason why French wine has such a lasting reputation around the world is because there are systems in place to guarantee and control quality. The main system here in France is called Appellation d'Origine Contrôlée, AOC. It's kind of a trademark label for all sorts of traditional products like cheese or even meat. For wine, there are hundreds of geographically defined appellations that can cover an entire region, an individual village, or even a specific vineyard. Now, to get an AOC label, you have to follow a series of strict rules in regard to things like grape variety and winemaking practices. The idea is to protect treasured brands like Bordeaux or Champagne from foreign competition. That's right, because contrary to popular belief, not any sparkling wine can be called Champagne. It has to come from the Champagne region of France and be made in a very specific way. Now, of course, there are other bubbly white wines from other regions, but they're never called Champagne. They're known as Crémant. And it can be confusing because the bottle looks exactly the same. But Crémant is made following fewer rules and, in fact, there's less pressure in the bottle and it tends to be cheaper. I know. I served it at my own wedding and nobody seemed to notice. <laughs> in any case, French wines can be delicious, they can be intriguing, but they can also be intimidating. So here are a few tips to help you out. If you're feeling a little lost, a good place to start is a wine shop, which is known as a caviste in French. There you can get some advice from an expert. If you're feeling a little bit more adventurous, you can go to your local supermarket where you'll find all sorts of good wines that won't break your budget. The good thing about France is that wine here is very affordable. Now, it can be a little daunting, so keep an eye out for these little medals that you'll see on a bottle, which means that the wine has been selected for its quality. As for how strong a wine is, just take a look at the wine bottle shape, for example. 
example, a Bordeaux has these square shoulders, which means that it's gonna be a stronger wine than something like a Beaujolais, a Burgundy, or a Cote d'Oron that comes in more of this rounder shaped bottle. And don't be afraid of screw caps. I know you are, Jeannie, but the wine can be very good. Also, I tend to not choose bottles that cost less than five euros, but you can try it out. Next, there are a few tips for how you should serve wine. Number one, always serve other people first, unless you're tasting the wine, in which case you pour yourself a little sip and then you fill other people's glasses and then you top up your glass. Rule number two, don't fill your glass all the way to the top, the so-called American pour. Fill the glass about a third of the way up, which makes it easier to swirl the wine and also easier to monitor how much you're drinking. When you're drinking your wine, don't hold your glass like this because your body heat will warm up the wine and distort the flavor. Hold your glass like this by the stem. Temperature is a key part of enjoying wine. And most importantly, relax. Wines are meant to be appreciated. There is no reason to stress out or be pretentious. It's all about having fun. When it comes to wine, the French mean business, big business. France is the second largest wine producer in the world, just behind its arch rival, Italy. In 2018, it produced the equivalent of about six billion bottles. Wine and spirits contribute to a crucial part of the French economy, accounting for some 500,000 jobs. It's France's second most valuable export, just after aeronautics. But the wine industry has been challenged in recent years. Internationally, there's the success of new world wines and, of course, the threat of tariffs in the United States. And here in France, people just aren't drinking as much as they used to. Things certainly have changed since my grandmother's era. She used to exclusively drink wine at the table, saying that anything else makes your guts rust. In the last 30 years, people have more than halved their daily consumption of wine, which might be a good thing. <laughs> but if French people are drinking a lot less wine, they're certainly favoring quality over quantity. Just like for fashion or for music, there are different trends in wine drinking, with different wines going in and out of style. And to find out more, I'm joined by Tanisha Townsend, who is a wine guide, a wine expert here in Paris. So tell me, Tanisha, what are the cool kids drinking these days? Honestly, the cool kids are drinking beer, <laughs> but they are also getting into natural wine, um, with people just kind of thinking more about what they put into their bodies, what they're eating, what they're drinking. They're moving more toward natural wine. And what is a natural wine? So a natural wine is something that is free from pesticides, fungicides, herbicides. It can taste just like regular wine because it is technically regular wine. It just doesn't have a lot of that intervention. Nothing additional added and nothing additional taken away. Now, some of them do need to have that things added because I've had a few that taste like dirt. <laughs> but this is where it comes into play where you go to a wine shop, you know the owner or you know the people who work there, and then you can ask them questions. And what's the deal with Bordeaux? Because my dad, who's French, says that Bordeaux is the only red wine out there. But, uh, you know, if you go to trendy bistros in Paris, it's not really what's on the menu. Has there been kind of a falling out with younger generations? Yeah, your dad says that. <laughs> but then uh, the younger generation, not quite so much. People look at that as kind of what their grandfathers drank or what their grandparents drank. Maybe they gave them a little sip at holiday dinners or things like that. They'll buy a Bordeaux for a special occasion for a party when they really want to impress someone. But there is a trend of younger winemakers starting to take over some of the vineyards in Bordeaux. So I think with the younger winemakers doing a few new techniques as far as winemaking, I think the younger people start to come back into Bordeaux again. So Bordeaux isn't boring? Not totally, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about rosé, because it's definitely a favorite in France, especially mm -hmm. in the summertime. Yes. French people are drinking more and more rosé. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the trick to choosing a good rosé? Again, asking questions. Um, asking questions to your wine shop owner, wherever you uh, buy your wine. Also, if there's a region that you already drink the red wine from, try the rosé from there. If you drink your red wine from the Rhone, try a rosé from there. If you drink your Cap Franc from the Loire, try a Cap Franc rosé. I wanna to talk to you about Beaujolais Nouveau as well. Okay. So Beaujolais Nouveau is the first wine from the harvest in Beaujolais, yes. in that region. Uh, it's celebrated on the third Thursday of November. Yes. Uh, but Beaujolais Nouveau has gotten a bad rap over the years. Some say it's outright disgusting, but it can actually be pretty good. How do you 
have a good Beaujolais Nouveau experience? Try a lot of them. Just buy five or six, try them all, see what you like. Also, if you pay attention to things that are happening in Florence climate-wise, you hear people talk about, oh, this was a really good growing season, we had a good amount of rain, a good amount of sunlight, then you know if it would be better for the Beaujolais harvest. And so one final question, what is the best way for you to appreciate a good wine? A light meal, but um, I like to set the scene. I like a fireplace, a nice glass of wine, some nice music, maybe some jazz, or some old school R&B. That's how I like to enjoy my wines. Sounds good, I'll definitely try <laughs> that out. Thank you so much for being on the show, Tanisha. Thank you so much for having me. Many of you had questions about the French wine industry, like Ricky J. Mark, who asked, what effect could climate change have on French wine production? Well, scientists and winemakers say they're already starting to see the effects of climate change. For instance, in certain areas, grapes are ripening during seasons that are warmer than they were, say, 20 or 30 years ago. And this tends to increase the sugar level in grapes, which tends to increase the alcohol content of wine. But more alcohol isn't necessarily a good thing because it seriously alters the taste of wine. Others of you had questions about the rumored health benefits about drinking red wine, like Teresa Renee. She said, I've heard the French have low heart disease, and that's been attributed to drinking red wine. Now, this theory has been dubbed the French paradox, and it was very popular during the 80s and the 90s. How in the world can we eat such fatty foods and cheese and still be healthy? Could it be all that red wine that we're drinking? Well, it turns out that the French paradox is a myth that isn't backed up by consistent medical research. But it's a myth that is persistent, including here in France, where wine has a special status. Well, the agriculture minister recently came under fire for saying that wine wasn't an alcohol like others in the sense that it's not as bad for you. But health experts were quick to jump in and disagree and say alcohol is alcohol. So please remember to drink responsibly. Absolutely. That wraps it up for this show. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget if you have your own questions about France or the French, you can post them on our Facebook page or tweet Flo at Flo Lomino. And we'll see you next time for another episode of French Connections Plus. Pakistan's intellectual capital, Lahore, is known as the Pearl of Punjab. But its image has been tarnished by terrorist attacks. During the 2016 Easter celebrations, a suicide bomber killed 75 people, including several children. Fanatics targeted not just Christians, but the entire Western-oriented part of Lahore society. The city is finally embracing life again, with modern infrastructure, preserving its heritage, and a cultural renaissance. Discover Lahore's vibrant energy in this episode of Revisited on France24 and France24.com.